Welcome to another edition of the news focus in Africa and the world. We begin today in Senegal and Uganda where both presidents have postponed the reopening of schools. In Senegal, President Macky Sall postponed the reopening initially scheduled for June 2 to a date yet to be fixed due to the coronavirus infections among teachers. According to the Senegalese news agency, Macky Sall asked those in charge of vocational training and health and administrative authorities to continue working on the possible reopening of schools. In Uganda, President Yoweri Museveni said the country is not yet ready for the resumption of classes and shifted the reopening of schools for final year students for one more month. He added reopening schools was risky as the country did not have enough kids to test learners every two weeks. The East African country has confirmed 457 COVID-19 cases with zero deaths and 72 recoveries. The Ducks to Dawn curfew is still on for another three weeks. The rate at which European officials in Africa are being dismissed is alarming and a cause for concern. From Tunisia to Burundi, now is Equatorial Guinea, who has declared the WHO resident representative persona non grata. Dr. Trifoni Kurungziza has been notified of his expulsion by the authorities accusing him of having inflated the figures linked to the coronavirus in the country. He has been ordered to leave the country as soon as possible by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation of Equatorial Guinea. The letter provides significant precision to avoid any misunderstanding the prime minister confirmed the order and who last friday before the senate declared they have no problem with the world health organization but with their representative in malabo In Ethiopia, the Tigray state in the north of the country says it will hold elections to elect a new parliament despite the fact that the election has been postponed at the national level. It is the latest drawn battle between the central government and the party, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, ruling the border state of Eritrea, which was ousted from power by the arrival of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in 2018. They are accusing the Prime Minister of postponing Responding the August 29 elections as a result of the outbreak of the coronavirus and say it's unconstitutional. The final decision rests in the hands of the Upper House of Parliament and the Council of Constitutional Complaints. The National Electoral Commission has denounced the fact, telling the Tigrarians that they alone have the power to organize polls. Officials in Africa have expressed concern over developments in the U.S. following the death of George Floyd, the black American killed in Minneapolis last week. The head of the African Union described his death as an act of murder. In Addis Ababa, the African Union Commission Chair Musa Faki Mahatmat took the U.S. government to tax over the death of Floyd. Meanwhile, U.S. embassies in Uganda, Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of Congo issued rare statements of concern over Floyd's death and called for accountability after the arrest of a police officer on third-degree murder and manslaughter charges. In Kenya, it was a landmark as Kenyans went out protesting to speak out against the number of Africans who have died during security forces' heavy-handed enforcements of law. Crowds of demonstrators gathered at the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, calling an end to black frequent death in police custody. The global protest has spread across the world with rising tensions decrying anti-racism and discrimination. Out of Africa, the French government has unveiled eight packages destined to a number of key economic sectors such as the tourism and the aviation. The French 
Finance Minister Bruno Le Maire said he expects France's economy to shrink by 11% this year as a direct result of the coronavirus pandemic, which he called a brutal shock. He, however, expressed that he expects the economy to bounce back in 2021 with a series of massive aid packages in tourism, car industry, and also the aviation. The Regulation and Safety Aero Club in France reacted, saying everything has been renewed and are following rules on how to behave in the pandemic as commercial aviation will soon resume. Still in France, clashes erupted in Paris on Tuesday between police and protesters after around 20,000 people defied a ban to rally over the 2016 death of a black man in police custody, galvanized by U.S. protests against racism and deadly police violence. The demonstrators used slogans from the American protest movement to call for justice for Adama Traoré, whose death four years ago has been a rallying cause against police brutality in France. His sister, who helped organize the demonstration, said her brother's case showed parallels with that of George Floyd, an unarmed black man. At first, the protest was peaceful, but then it turned violent as a small member of protesters set fires. Police used tear gas to disperse the crowd. Outrage reignited and wounds reopened by a case thousands of miles away. Other protests were held across France in the northern city of Lille, Marseille and Lyon. And in the U.S., George Floyd mass protest marks a turning point for racism and police brutality in the U.S. His death has packed days of protests, including in Washington, D.C. The U.S. president has come under criticism for his handling of the tense situation, in particular the forceful removal of protesters outside the White House in order for Donald Trump to have a photo opportunity at a nearby church. Washington's colleague Ash Bishop has strongly criticized the president accusing him of using religion as props for his own political ends. Protests are continuing in the country. Curfews have been placed in many big cities to keep order. The protests have been mostly peaceful during the day, but nightfall has brought some looting and vandalism in certain areas. Thank you very much for choosing the news to be informed in Africa and the world on DBS television. Until we meet again, do take care and stay blessed in the company of programs.